I, I would suggest that there's an enhancement to that. Certainly you need to work with the insurance providers. They have very good information. But working with the providers to understand exactly where the health of your, of your employees are uh, can also be a very beneficial tool. And, and I think that's one of the things that's going to come out of this, you know, with, with understanding more on a um, kind of a micro level what's going on in a particular employer's population can be very helpful from the provider standpoint. And that's, that's one of the, the areas that I think that we're all moving to. I think you're going to see, you know, providers, physicians are some of the largest drivers of some of these costs. And now physicians are highly engaged in being this part of the solution, not just somebody who provides care, but actually understanding what's going on for the employer and impacting that in a positive way. Carlin, did you have something? Yeah, just I wanted to add, <coughs> Jeff brings up a good point. I think there are a lot of uh, population-based programs, whether it's smoking cessation, you know, healthy eating, but then as an employer, you may have some unique characteristics that you want to focus on. We, we had a trucking company we, uh, we work with, and they had, a, they had problems, uh, chronic problems with sleep, uh, sleep deprivation with their, uh, their truckers. And we worked with them on a, on a customized approach to help test for that. And that's where you engage um, provider groups, pr specific specialties to help you diagnose and deploy programs. And that's going to be the next wave uh, of, of deployment for employers is focusing on those specific things that they may have going on with their population. Because you've got some unique characteristics depending on the industry you're in. Let's take a couple questions from the audience. If we could get a microphone over to table 28. <coughs> Hughes Warren has a question there. And then the next question will be at table three. Yeah, this is for uh, Jack and, and Jeff. Uh, my wife, uh, her OBGYN recently just sent out a letter saying they were closing their doors, uh, I believe August 1. Uh, it, do you see that as a trend? Um, and does this have anything to do with the lack of tort reform uh, in this legislation? <laughs> no to the latter part. Right. Okay. No to, no to, that. No to the latter part. Um, <laughs> this is a tickly situation. No, I don't think this is a trend. I think I, I think when you go back and look, um, you're dealing with you know, in, in Wilmington Health and with others, a very stable, long-term, committed organization to New Hanover County. And uh, I think I've always said we're going to be here in 50 years. I can't speak to everybody else. And I think they ended a relationship with their employer who is not located in New Hanover County. And I think you've got a unique situation in that that, that, that happened. I do not think that is indicative of anything you're going to see throughout New Hanover County. I can't add anything to that. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> that was a very good political answer used, but it had nothing to do with medical liability on that one. So, Jonathan Barfield, table three. This question is for Jack Bartow. Realizing that the uh, hospital is a county-run hospital yes, somewhat, sir. can you explain how much you write off uh, for indigent care and whether or not this uh, health care reform will uh, reduce that cost? Okay, I'll be up. when you look at billings and where it boils down, Jonathan, it's probably well over $100 million a year. When you look at cost, it's about $45 million a year that we write off for indigent and self-indigent or, uh, or, or bad debt, which is a huge amount. Do I expect that to drop or change? I think what you're going to see, as I said earlier, is you're going to see a cost shift. I think we're going to get less money from state and federal for the, for the current service that we do now. And the idea is to supplement that back with some of the individuals that are that are then going to get coverage. So I'm, we're hoping for a wash in the process by reducing current payments and then adding it back for individuals who are uninsured. But as we said before, we're still going to have about 23 million 23 million people who are uninsured in the process when this when this is done. And we're still going to have individuals that don't have insurance, and then we're still going to have individuals who can't pay their bad, who can't pay their coinsurance and deductibles, uh, that are you know that are marginally insured in that process and don't have the cash flow. Yes, that piece will be, but I don't think overall reimbursement is going to change dramatically in the process. So a couple of you have touched on this before, and I think you know Bill asked the question directly: 
who's paying for all this? Uh, if you look at the federal legislation, I mean, Jack just talked about the, you know, some of the federal programs and reimbursement rates or things like that. But if you kind of yeah. look at that, who, who's paying the bill? Well, that seemed the Jack's uh, answer to that question is the answer du jour. Uh, if you would ask the pharmaceutical industry, they would basically tell you the same thing. There's this sort of we're going to get you know, um, lower prices for our drugs, but we're going to make it up on volume. It's this, uh, it's this price volume, and therefore we're going to break even. So it's about a trillion dollars. I think the CBO came out recently and said it's $115 billion more dollars than uh, originally projected. Let's just call it an even trillion. The pharma industry is uh, going to pay about, about $100 billion of that. It's around 90, let's just, let's just call it 10 percent. And their story is the same, which is, um, you know, Pharma, I think, played good defense in this health care legislation. What do I mean by that? Really bad things could have happened to pharma if they didn't play ball with the current administration. So how did they play ball? They played ball by funding 10 percent of it. And the way they're doing that, they're filling the Medicare Part D donut hole by giving um, uh, you know, huge rebates um, to, 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 to those folks. Um, they're also going to give a whole lot of um, Medicaid rebates as well. And they're, they're going to uh, pay some taxes based on market share, not too dissimilar to the insurance industry. And, you know, broadly speaking, that ends, adds up to about $100 billion. But, um, you know, what they prevent it was Congress has the legislative power to, uh, to put price controls out there. Um, you know, um, they, they, they can um, put up drug reimportation legislation, which is not favorable to the, to the uh, U.S.-based uh, pharma industry. Uh, and they can do all kinds of things like that. And so what pharma did um, was play ball with the administration, you know, fund some of this health care reform to prevent worse things from happening. You know, you, you can decide whether that's smart or not, but that's what they did in a nutshell. So that, that, that's a pharma perspective. Now, PPD is not a pharmaceutical company. We provide services to the pharmaceutical industry. We want that industry to be healthy. Okay, uh, they're a large portion of our customer base. The government's a, a portion of our customer base as well. We do work for them. Um, you know, at the end of the day, we want everybody to be whole and healthy uh, as we work through who's paying for this. But, you know, who's paying for this is mostly all of you in this room uh, is who's paying for this. And so, you know, each of us uh, as individuals. So I think small business owners are going to pay some. I think big companies are going to pay some. I think the pharma industry is going to pay. I think the insurance industry is going to pay. And, um, you know, uh, but, I, I, you know, like Jack, I'm, I think um, it brings out the entre entrepreneurial spirit in America. We'll figure out how to do this and do this well. And, and I'm, I'm, I'm bullish in that sense. But I think it's going to be really challenging. And let me just give you one micro detail. So one of the things coming out of this reform is the formation of this um, I, uh, um, independent payment advisory board that's going to kick in. And their job, in a nutshell, it's 15 individuals who will be appointed by the president for, I think, a, a, a six-year term. Uh, it's a full-time job. And what they have to do is come forward with recommendations on how to save money uh, in, in rising health care costs. And they have to give them to uh, Health and Human Services uh, and, you know, ultimately to Congress uh, at a certain point. And if our health care costs as a nation are rising above the consumer price index and the, and the medical consumer price index beyond a certain formula, you know, they, they have to ratchet it back down. However, they're not allowed to ration care. They're not allowed to cut benefits. And, you know, they're not allowed to change, um, you know, any, any sort of the payment vehicles there. They are allowed at present to change reimbursement to physicians. But that is a heck of a job for that, that board. Your job is to make sure that we don't have cost overruns and we, we realize the $28 billion in savings by, I think, 2018 that you're supposed to achieve, um, but you don't have any of the authority and autonomy to do some of the hard things that might need to be done to actually save money uh, or, or, or let's call it decrease the level, the increasing level of, uh, of rising health care costs. It's, it's a heck of a tough job that that organization has. And, you know, all of us in, in, in our companies and our businesses up here are going to have to contribute to this in, in various ways, shapes, and forms, and, and we're going to try hard to do it. I'm bullish on America. We're, we're, we're a smart country with smart, smart people, and I think we'll give it our best shot, but it's a heck of a task we have in front of us.